And there have been developments since the December publication of the document on blessings and the initial response. Jonathan Liedel, senior editor for the National Catholic Register, is here to help get us caught up on the latest. Jonathan, great to have you. For those confused by that initial document released before Christmas, what does it do and what doesn't it do? Well, let's start uh, with what fiducia supplicans doesn't do, because I feel like this is where a lot of the, the confusion came from. Initial media reports in mainstream media and including also in Catholic uh, progressive media said that this was allowing for the blessing of same-sex unions and relationships. And quite clearly, quite emphatically, that that is not what this blessing uh, or not what the document allows for. In fact, it underscores that the church's teaching on marriage and sexuality is unchanged and that anything that would cause confusion or scandal uh, about uh, the nature of those things should be avoided and needs to be avoided. What the document does do is it does allow for what it describes as the spontaneous, uh, non-liturgical pastoral blessings. So outside of a formal context, uh, if a, a same-sex couple or a couple in an irregular relationship seeks a simple blessing for the closeness of the Lord in their life and that they might better conform their lives to his will, this is something that an ordained minister can offer them. Uh, the document also makes clear, though, on, on how this can be done in a way that avoids confusion and scandal. For instance, it says there can't be any kind of prepared text, right? They shouldn't be promoted. It's not a liturgical rite. Um, it also uh, adds, in addition to that, um, that any use of clothing or symbols or signs associated with marital blessing marital blessings need to be avoided as well. But even with all of that guidance, and it's a lengthy document over 5,000 words long, I think a significant point of confusion for many people in its aftermath was what does it mean to bless a same-sex couple as opposed to two people who might be in, uh, who might be together in a partnership. And I think a major concern that was raised is that by offering these kinds of blessings, the church would be implicitly condoning uh, the kind of sexual activity, right, that, that makes two people a couple. So that's been one of the major uh, concerns and, and points of needed clarification in the aftermath of fiducia supplicants. Absolutely. It needed clarification. And the global response is what signaled that to the church from bishops and conferences refusing to implement the document to those who offered additional guidance. Um, this, this was significant because the way that same-sex uh, same attracted people are treated around the world is different. Tell us a little bit more about the other clarifying document that was released just this week. What did it do? That's right. Well, well. first of all, this is somewhat unprecedented. A press release from uh, the Dicaster, the Doctrine of the Faith, from Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, the prefect of that Vatican office, which came just two and a half weeks after the initial document said no further clarification would be guided. But given that pushback that you cited, uh, this new clarification, it did a few things. One, it underscored that bishops uh, in different parts of the world, it is their duty and their responsibility to discern how to prudently implement this guidance in a way that will avoid confusion and scandal. So of course, uh, throughout many African countries, places in Eastern Europe, but also individual dioceses in Europe, Latin America, and the US, uh, bishops have said, we're, we're not going to allow uh, these blessings at this time because of the possibility of confusion, or they've mandated uh, that these blessings be done in private uh, to avoid scandal. So. The clarification said, yes, this kind of discernment by the local bishop is possible as long as it's not taken as a rejection of the document as a whole. In addition, uh, Cardinal Fernandez also offered a few more clarifications about how these blessings could be done uh, in a way that might allegedly avoid confusion. For instance, he said the blessings need to be very short. He said 10 to 15 seconds, uh, and he underscored that these blessings should not take place in, in prominent parts of churches. They shouldn't happen in front of altars, which is something that we have actually seen uh, in the aftermath of the document itself. So more words from the Vatican, um, but still unsure if that will bring the clarification uh, that so many people are looking for. Well, you say more words, but those aren't actions. Do you think there will be additional developments from the congregation or a statement from Pope Francis? And might this harm the unity and ecumenical dialogue that has been a legacy for this pontificate? Well, that's certainly the concern among many people uh, throughout the church across the world right now. And I, and I think you're right, Monsi, that um, the, the Vatican continue to 
offer and issue clarified, clarified statements and guidance. But a lot of people's concern is if the Vatican and the Castry of the Doctrine of the Faith is unwilling to enforce its guidance, that this will lead to widespread confusion uh, about the nature of marriage and sexuality in the church and possible uh, great disunity across the universal church. And, and in fact, we've already seen some of these abuses in the weeks since Fiducia Suplicant uh, was published. We saw Father James Martin uh, in, in New York hold a blessing of two friends who are civilly same-sex married. Uh, he had the New York Times come and document it. So clearly in a way that seems inconsistent with the, the spontaneous non-planned nature of these blessings. Uh, we've also seen church leaders in Germany where they've been pushing for formalized liturgical blessings of same-sex couples and also changes to the church teaching on sexuality. In the aftermath of this, they've said they don't see this as a stop sign for them uh, and they're going to uh, continue their push. So really the, the concern here is that there's a need for action because if action isn't taken, what we'll see across the church in different places, different dioceses, different countries, is different people implementing it, uh, implementing fiducia suplicans differently. And in some places, it'll give rise to confusion about what the church actually teaches about sexuality and the nature of marriage. Um, and if that isn't managed, we some people fear that the stage might be set for uh, the possibility of, of a schism in the church, if not a formal one, at least one uh, practically speaking. Well, those are dire consequences. Jonathan, we're going to keep watching this developing story. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monsi.